So I'm live. Am I live? Hello, everybody. Uh, it's Steve Altman. I'm here. I'm with the Nomberg Law Firm, and um, I am doing my first uh, Nomberg Live or Facebook Live broadcast of, um, for the Nomberg Law Firm. And uh, we're going to be doing a question and answer series every week um, uh, of the first Friday of each month. And I'm here to talk to you today about bankruptcy law and, uh, and answer any questions that you might have. Um, I can tell you if, if you had told me 27 years ago when I started practicing that I'd be doing a question and answer series on Facebook Live, I'd have looked at you and said, what's Facebook? Because, uh, I, I mean, this is all new to me, it's the first time I've ever done something like this. And, uh, but I, I, I do want to, um, educate uh, you guys on bankruptcy um, you know it's difficult time for a lot of people out there and I think it's a it's a good thing to uh, to talk about uh, in case you're considering it um, but if you have any questions for me uh, go ahead and, and leave them in the comment uh, box on the side and uh, and I'll be glad to try to answer the, any questions that you might have um, the uh, uh, next week, uh, I can I will tell you that uh, uh, Bernard Nomberg is going to be talking about Social Security disability. Uh, I'm sorry, next month, and um, and you know the law firm uh, we we handle uh, workers' compensation, Social Security disability, some personal injury, and of course bankruptcy. Um, and so if uh, if you ever need anything, any questions about that, uh, tune in uh, to these to the series of uh, question and answer that we'll be having each month. Um, and so, one of the things uh, that uh, uh, a lot of people will ask me about um, is whether uh, they can keep their house or their car in bankruptcy. Um, that just is typically one of the first questions that someone will ask. And, um, and a lot of it depends on uh, how you um, have that the car or, or house, whether it's paid for, uh, how much equity you have in those types of assets. Uh, for the most part, um, uh, most people don't have that much equity in their house when they're considering filing for bankruptcy. Um, and, uh, and you can typically uh, keep your house and also keep your car as, as long as, again, there's not that much uh, equity or value in those, those items. Um, you're entitled to a homestead exemption in your house um, up to $15,500, and uh, um, you're also uh, typically entitled to, uh, uh, for personal property, $7,750 of personal property assets. Um, it looks like uh, we have a question that has come in. Um, if, uh, if I wrote a check that was returned for insufficient funds, can I bankrupt on this debt? Um, that's a good question. And if you have um, uh, typically a, an insufficient funds uh, debt, is uh, is still a debt that you can bankrupt on. It's uh, it, as long as you didn't commit some type of uh, criminal offense in uh, in writing that check. Um, now, if you were found uh, uh, criminally liable for right issuing that 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 check, then that would be a criminal fine that you would you would not be able to discharge or bankrupt. But if it's just uh, you know if you wrote a check, and you thought you had the money in the account at the time, or you didn't do anything criminally in, in writing that check, um, that debt can still be included in your bankruptcy and you can still discharge it. Um, and it doesn't happen that often, but there, there are definitely times where, where instances like that come up. Um, so uh, base, that's, that's certainly that's something that, that you might see from time to time. Um, as far as uh, uh, filing a Chapter 7, um, and we are talking about uh, 
you know, your, your house and your car and some other things that you can keep. Um, and as far as uh, having exemptions, um, the, the main thing that, that it's important that you talk with uh, a bankruptcy lawyer about is uh, frequently is timing. Um, you'd want to make sure uh, that you know if when you when you're thinking about filing that you have um, uh, if you have a situation where you may have uh, filed a a prior case. Um, you know, let's say you you had uh, filed a prior uh, Chapter Seven, and you're still wanting to keep your house. Um, maybe you were behind on the payments, you can still file a Chapter 13 even after having filed a Chapter 7 uh, and still try to, and, and by doing that, you would be able to keep your house, but uh, you're not entitled to a discharge. Um, and so uh, in that subsequent Chapter 13. Um, so let me tell you about what a discharge is. A discharge is what you're essentially wanting to have happen when you file a bankruptcy that eliminates all of the debt that you have in your case. Um, and if you have filed a Chapter 7 and you've received a discharge, um, if, if for whatever reason um, you still owe money to the uh, mortgage lender on your home, uh, you can still file a Chapter 13 after having filed that Chapter 7, but it's only for, um, but if you file within four years of having filed that prior Chapter 7, you don't get a discharge in the new case, in that new Chapter 13, but you do um, uh, get an opportunity to keep the house and keep paying for it uh, in the Chapter 13. So there are different um, uh, issues that come up um, anytime we're talking about uh, you know different the different types of bankruptcy chapter 7 chapter 13 and there's also chapter 11 which I'll talk a little bit about in, in just a few minutes um, also getting another question coming in um, can I bankrupt on my income taxes and um, Yes, you can bankrupt on your income taxes, uh, but you have to make sure you have filed all of your tax returns. So uh, it's extremely important that you actually have filed all of your tax returns on time. Um, basically, if you um, have, you know, the, the tax returns are due uh, April 15th of each year, not this year because of COVID, but uh, it was. It, there's always a due date for your tax return. If as long as you file the tax return when it's due, um, those taxes can be discharged as long as they're more than three years old from the date that you file. So you want to. Um, and when I was talking about the timing of, of bankruptcy being so important, um, you definitely want to be looking at uh, when you filed your tax return. Um, and when, before you file that bankruptcy, you want to make sure that the tax returns were due at least more than three years before you file the bankruptcy. Um, I've seen a lot of situations lately where people are not filing their tax returns and they're owing a lot of taxes, a lot of money that they can't bankrupt on because they didn't file it. So uh, it's very important that you get those filed before uh, you consider filing for bankruptcy. Uh, there is a situation where if you file the tax return late, but in the uh, IRS has assessed the taxes more than two years before you can before you file for bankruptcy, you can still discharge those taxes as well. So there there are different situations uh, in Chapter Seven where you can discharge taxes. Uh, you can also discharge taxes if you want to file a Chapter 13. And again, a Chapter 13 is where you're repaying your creditors over time. Um, and you would just basically repay those taxes over a three to five year period. Um, and then you would get your discharge, assuming you paid the taxes in full um, at the end of your case. 
So that's, that's, um, those are the benefits of bankruptcy where you've got taxes involved. Um, and uh, let's see. Um, one of the other things that um, you might encounter when you're considering um, uh, filing for bankruptcy, a lot of times there are issues about your income. Um, if you want to file a Chapter 7, you have to make sure that you qualify for bankruptcy. And what that means is uh, some people have too much income. Um, the bankruptcy code looks at how much of the total household income you have at the time you file, and they compare it to, it's compared with um, the median income for a family of whatever size household you have at the time that you're filing. And if you have too much income um, between your, uh, your, yourself, your spouse, um, then you may not qualify for a Chapter 7. And that's called the means test. Um, that's the technical term uh, in bankruptcy that you want to qualify for bankruptcy before you consider filing. Uh, you'd, hate to, you'd hate to file a case and then realize afterward that you don't qualify because you, you have too much income, uh, household income, in order to file. Um, and it's, it's kind of a calculation that has to be done. It's almost like a formula uh, that uh, we input into the, our, our bankruptcy software uh, to be able to determine whether you qualify for bankruptcy. Uh, so it's important that you, uh, again, talk with uh, a bankruptcy lawyer before you file, um, and uh, uh, you can uh, reach me at 205-930-6900, or um, my uh, our uh, email address is steve at nomberglaw.com. Um, and again, this is uh, I'm talking about different aspects of bankruptcy law. I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have. Uh, just, you know, uh, enter them into the comment uh, box. And uh, Nomberg Law Live is uh, something that we're doing once a, a month on the first Friday um, of each month. And, um, you know, if we're uh, next, next month, Bernard Nomberg's going to talk about Social Security disability. Uh, last month, David Nomberg spoke about workers' compensation, and uh, so you know, just we're we're here to to uh, talk about these different uh, important areas of uh, law. And um, uh, one thing I, I will tell you that um, I just filed a a case of last month for a company. There is a new Small Business Reorganization Act that allows small businesses to file Chapter 11. And it's a more streamlined, uh, less costly way for a small business to file bankruptcy. Um, and so, it, you know, that, it, there are, are uh, it, it's an interesting new um, way for, the, uh, for businesses to reorganize in a more cost-efficient manner. Uh, you don't have to, to worry about a disclosure statement. There are no quarterly fees to the bankruptcy administrator. Um, there, there's just, there are so many different uh, uh, better uh, reasons to consider a small business Chapter 11, especially if you're seeing uh, your business having trouble um, making, uh, you know, making payments or if it's if you're, you're thinking that maybe you're behind on payroll taxes, um, there are all different reasons why you might want to consider a small business Chapter 11. And uh, the, the laws changed earlier this year to make it more affordable um, and streamline it so that your plan is due within 90 days. Um, it's not some you know big Chapter 11 case that's going to go on for you know a year, a year or two. So um, you know that's that's the the new law is, is definitely interesting um, and, and can be a, a benefit for a lot of people um, 
that there is one other thing I wanted to say about about the small business chapter 11 it, it you can do it as an individual um, maybe you are the guarantor of a large business debt um, from your business and you uh, and maybe it's attached to your house as a second mortgage I know there are lots of SBA loans that that will do that sometimes but you know if there's a if, if you owe uh, as a guarantor on a mortgage I'm sorry on a, a debt that's secured by your house there may be a way for you to um, modify how you're going to repay that and you may not have to pay the full amount um, in order to uh, uh, to, to discharge what you owe on that uh, guarantee so there's some benefit to you individually as well it's not just for for corporations or LLC's um, if you're a business owner and the majority of your debt is business debt um, then you might want to consider a small business chapter 11 especially if the amount of the debt exceeds the uh, total amounts that are allowed under the, um, the code um, and again, that's something to uh, to talk to a, a bankruptcy lawyer about before you do it. But there's definitely a benefit uh, for individuals as much as for um, corporations when looking at the Small Business Chapter 11. Um, and those are the things I, I really wanted to talk to you about, uh, kind of give you some idea of, of Chapter 7, Chapter 13, and Chapter 11, just you know, a little bit here or there. Um, you know, just uh, uh, again, we, we do this every um, uh, the first Friday of each month. Uh, he also, did, um, uh, Bernard does uh, uh, weekly uh, Nomburg Law Live uh, chat where he, he talks with lawyers and uh, other important uh, you know, community uh, members. Uh, that uh, you know, it, it's it's a wonderful thing if you have a chance to uh, to catch it. It's, he does it every Tuesday, um, and uh, and again, we're going to be doing this you know once a month. Um, I I don't I don't see any other questions coming in, but um, I want to say also we do have a, uh, a YouTube channel. Um, the number law um, YouTube channel and uh, we're all over other social media platforms uh, so please check us out and um, I, I'm not sure if there's a I think that's about all for for today um, thank you for for listening in and uh, uh, hope to see you at uh, maybe next month